All right, the stage is set for the general election. Candidates have been chosen with this year's primary election, having a share of surprises and close calls. Dr. John Hart of the Hawaii Pacific University Communications Department joins us in the studio. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Got some sleep? <laughs> a bit. Now that you've got a chance to digest some of the information, are there any surprises or close calls that kind of stands out in your mind? Well, the LG race was closer than expected, probably because uh, Jill Takuda's campaign backloaded their money. So we saw a big influx of money at the end, making that race closer than many of us thought. Uh, we did not return, I believe, three incumbents. And that's a big deal in Hawaii. We love the people that are in office now. Uh, so that was a bit of a surprise. For example, uh, Brickwood Galateria, a uh, former uh, you know, Democratic Party chief here, uh, you know, didn't win. Why do you think that? Well, I think all politics are local is, is the old maxim. Uh, he had a opponent who uh, got out, was aggressive, was a community organizer, well known. And he's an incumbent, I don't think, saw this one coming, didn't do the same kind of campaigning, and it snuck up on him. Now, in the governor's race, you had the incumbent, David Ige, defeating Colleen Hanabusa, and you yeah. wanted to talk about. Colleen Hanabusa. Yeah, I, I think it's important to know that I think if you listen to her concession speech mm -hmm. and her unity breakfast speech, uh, she's not going to run again. Of course, never say never. But uh, I think we need to remember that she was the first woman's pres uh, Senate president. She did a fine job. She was an aggressive campaigner, a good debater, and she will have a place in Hawaii political history. And moving forward, what do you expect moving forward in terms of maybe the governor's race with David Ige and Andrea Topolo? Well, Andrea Topolo, is a, she's young, mm -hmm. she's bright, she's a good speaker. Uh, I think she will do well. Her challenge will be the Republican Party is so small here. She's going to have to uh, do a wonderful job of uh, getting independence, getting Democrats to cross over, hope that Governor Ige makes a mistake that she can capitalize, but the governor has shown himself to be very, very resilient and very able to come back from mistakes. And so I think she's got her hands full in the fall. When you're doing campaign strategies, what have you learned from some of the campaign strategies that were held this past primary and what worked and what didn't? Well, I think what we learned is it's not just about money buys elections. It's money gives you the opportunity to get an election. We saw elections where money made a difference and money different. For example, uh, the Carpenters Union PAC, hugely influential with all their money, they decided the Colleen Hanabusa race, the governor's race was safe, did not invest any money, it was too late. On the other hand, they decided to invest in the future in the lieutenant governor's race, and they put money behind Josh Green. They spent that money early while no one else was spending. This allowed uh, Green's people to have the airways for three or four weeks unchallenged. By the time Takuda's people spent their money, they backloaded, which is traditional, you know, big push at the end. Uh, it was too little, too late. So she made it close, but too late to win. Were there any trends from the outer islands that maybe surprised you? Well, I, I think the one thing that would be interesting to point out is, is that everyone uh, loved uh, the David E. Gay uh, Big Island uh, advertisement. It had Harry Kim. It had E. Gay being decisive in a crisis, everything we did not see with the false missiles alert. Interestingly enough, Colleen Hanabusa took that district. All right, Dr. John Hart, thank you so much for stopping by this morning. My Always pleasure. interesting, dropping you a lot of knowledge. All right, thank you very much, doctor. Well,